to Different Gravy, not just another Sheffield Wednesday podcast. I'm one of the hosts, Richard Miller, and my co-host is weighing up whether to use his free weekend for a viewing of the Calgary Hitmen in the Western Hockey League at the Scotia Saddle Dome or the Calgary Kangaroos in the United States Australian Football League at the Inland Athletic Park. How are you doing today, Luke? Have you, you got any closer to making a decision? No, it's it's a really tough one. I've seen him then before. It's always fun to see a bit of uh, a bit of cheap hockey at the, uh, the Saddle Dome. Yeah, spoiled for choice, really, because uh, there's also the Roughneck in the Lacrosse League. That's uh, are, are, they, are they back this week? Is that is are we back into lacrosse season? I don't. <laughs> Isn't it always lacrosse season? And it always is lacrosse season here on the sunny beaches of uh, Calgary, Alberta. Yeah. It's always lacrosse season somewhere. Mm, lacrosse Some o'clock. <laughs> um, well, it, it, I mean, if you don't have any uh, any objections, Luke, I, I'm just going to dive straight into breaking hoo hoos. Let's do this. Breaking hoo hoos. It's a, a bit of a slow week with the with the international. It's a bit of a break. slow week. I mean, it's international break, which are naturally pretty slow anyway. Um, mm. We have, and we only have one player on international duty, I believe, and that's Liam Palmer. Well, also, okay. I, I believe Kosovan Snooky got himself a goal. Kosovan Snooky did get himself a goal. He did. He, Off of those big uh, Jersey, Jersey Shore, Eastern European Jersey Shore off cheeks of his own. Yes. I he bummed it that. home with he great did, applause. He did bum it home, as you said. <laughs> so eloquently. So Liam Palmer played right back for Scotland. Is uh his second cap for his country, so subjected to to a pummeling, really. Uh, to, at least towards the end, it they held out for an hour, Scotland, and uh, and then was it four 0 in the end? It was four 0 Yeah, they shipped four goals to Russia. So it's just a bit of a miserable time for um, for Scotland as a as a national side, and uh, it's a shame that that's coinciding with the uh, with the peak of Liam Palmer's career. <laughs> <laughs> It's good that he's getting. Uh, I'm just, it's kind of impressive he's getting some games. I'll be honest. Yeah, it's good. If you don't, you know, if you really uh, don't want to pick any Rangers players as the manager, you you do start to um, to open up different possibilities in uh, in the wider world of football. So, yeah. <laughs> It's been argued that the old firm have had too strong of a hold over the uh, the Scotland team through the years, and uh, you know certainly employing someone that yeah w- won't ever pick a Rangers player. So uh, it's a different choice. It's a different direction, and this is the bold new world we live in. <laughs> oh, Rich, uh, the Steve Clark Revolution. Steve Clark Revolution. He, uh, I mean, he's been such a wonderful manager, hasn't he? It's been uh, it's been night and day. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, uh, and then uh, yeah. England, on the other hand, on the flip side, I guess, of me, for a very, very loose view, lost their first competitive qualifier in ten years. So, yeah, there we go. breaking records. It's good to, you know, it's good to take these things off, and you know, sometimes you've got to break the hoodoo. <laughs> yeah, it's been interesting with England because obviously uh, before the last World Cup, expectations couldn't have been lower. People really were not <laughs> expecting very much at all. And a very good set of performances, whether the competition was was particularly stressful, it's hard to say, but still a very good set of performances over the summer have really rocketed those uh, expectations up to... Um, to some pretty pretty intense levels, <laughs> but as you said, they got that Huddersfield like um, run hoodoo off their back. They yeah, did. That's a real monkey. Um, and England manager Lee Clark. Oh, I'm I'm sorry, uh, Gareth Southgate will uh, <laughs> be able to move forward from that. Yeah, I mean, he'll he'll have to buy himself another little waistcoat to uh, cheer himself up and uh, and just pick himself up, dust himself off, and uh, and go again. I'm starting to hate myself for talking about international football as much. Right? Should we <laughs> should we use that as a chance to segue and move on? Let's let's jump off from that. Um, the the other bit of um, it's it's been an ongoing news story which we we have sadly neglected as it's developed. But um, one of the things that's been quite fun following following Wednesday for the last few weeks is all of the ways that Fernando Forestieri has uh, chosen to to fill in his time whilst he's been. Uh, subject to to a ban for maybe or maybe not being a racist person, and uh, yeah, it's just been it's just been quite fun to watch him on his uh, his 
work experience slash gap year. He's been learning some new party pieces. So there's been videos of him sort of flicking the ball over the back of a goal, running around the front and scoring. Presumably he doesn't get enough time on the training pitch to do that normally. He has, He's done the 50-50 draw. He's been pulling pints in the foundation lounge. He's, he's handing out checks. We're just making a lot of use out of him at this period of time. Um, some of the things that haven't yet been covered on the on the the socials by the club, he's taken some of the kit home to give it a wash. He's he's collected the balls after training. He's been mowing the training pitches. He's been manning the phones at D taxis. He's had to you know he's had to look, pick up the English phrase of uh, he's just coming around your corner now. He's sat in every seat of the ground. Uh, not for charity, just out of sheer boredom. And then finally, he's been polishing up the elephants at the front door of the South Stand. So quite a time for Forestieri. We're certainly getting our mileage out of that uh, bumper contract he's on right now, aren't we? <laughs> I just like the fact that somebody at the club has clearly gone, well, if you're going to be here anyway, you might as well make yourself useful. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he's just got to the stage he's annoyed Johnny too much. And he's, he's like, could you find something for Fessy to do? He's just just annoying me. Too getting many points. Getting on me last nerve. So we've uh, y- you came up with the excellent phrase, and it became the, the title of the episode, um, Munkenstein's Monster. And the way my brain works, I I then thought, that's... That's a uh, that's a potential segment we could do, building our own Munkenstein's monster. You were talking about it in terms of the way that the the squad had been kind of strapped together from 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 loose ends and and made to to, to perform uh, beyond its um, <laughs> its natural abilities. Even clinical killing machine. Exactly. Um, like a six thinking... billion, six billion lira dollar, <laughs> six billion lira <laughs> football squad. Yes, I guess. exactly. Yeah, we uh, can rebuild them, Gary. <laughs> but but my mind went to actually building a a Frankenstein esque uh, perfect Wednesday player. So what we what we'd like to do is put forward each of our Munkenstein's monsters monsters. Uh, so one of them from from the the current squad, and then maybe a, maybe taking a historical perspective and doing a kind of all time uh, Munkenstein's monster. Although I'm very aware we will show our age. I, I'm guessing there won't be any sort of like Mickey Lyons and people like that. It's going to be pretty sort of 90s, noughties, nowies. But if you'd like to submit your own. Munkenstein's monster. Do feel free to, uh, to 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 send it to us on Twitter, which is at gravy underscore pod, uh, or or you can email it across to us at differentgravypod at gmail dot com. So we've done some homework. This is not just off the top of the dome, but we didn't talk beforehand, Luke, about how we would break down Munkenstein's monster. Do you want me to go through my categories, and then if you've got any to feed in, we can, we can add those. Does that make sense? Uh, I'm wondering. I think this is going to be very dynamic and very kind of off the cuff here but uh, I've probably gone with a different kind of mentality to you I think maybe we look at it from a different perspective okay also I'd like to add as well that just as a bit of preamble mine is historical as well so if oh, there okay. is an element of a Frankenstein monster I've gone ahead and um, I've reanimated <laughs> some old parts basically Oh, excellent. Oh, very good. And uh, before we get started, I'd just like to give a bit of a warning to the listeners. This will probably be our most problematic and homoerotic adventure yet. (laughs) Or just going on my list, I haven't seen Rich's yet, so uh, there could be some surprises. (laughs) I I hope so. (laughs) I've been waiting so long for the podcast to go in this time. Trying, I've been, I've been sort of, uh, you know, pulling at the 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 little edge opened up by uh, by our talk of Joey Pelopesi. <laughs> but I think this is the time we we whip the bandage off and and we go for it. Okay. So, so I think maybe it's maybe it's okay that we're both in the lab and we're both working on separate projects on this one, Rich. Okay, that's cool. Okay, we we're sharing the same campus, but maybe but working on different. Yeah, we, we, we've got different funding streams. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so would you uh would you like to go first sir okay i'm happy to do that okay and may you also uh be allowed that i may so interject with my thoughts and uh comments oh please do please oh, good please. stuff let's get cracking then so the way the way i've the way i've sort of broken it out i've got a i've got a footballing brain a head then a physical head that that brain would sit within the arms which indicates captaincy interesting okay torso, torso sort of body but also engine very good uh, 
and then right peg and left peg. That's how I've... Um, I was going to do crotch, but that's obviously Waddle, particularly the semi-final, uh, after he <laughs> scored that incredible free kick and clearly, clearly enjoyed it so, so much. So he is the undoubted uh, goat of the uh, of the crotch region for me. <laughs> we just went straight there. <laughs> we didn't pass go. There was no detours. Went straight to Mayfair, didn't we? We did. Oh, and there were two hotels and a and a strip of houses. <laughs> so for, for the footballing brain, so I've done I've done a a modern iteration. So the current squad, and then also a kind of historic view. So for the footballing brain, I've gone for uh, Barry Bannon, and then my more long term view is Johnny Sheridan. Um, Very good, excellent. <laughs> the the head, I'm I'm thinking in terms of prowess. Uh, particularly in the opposition box. So I've gone for Iorfa from the current crew because we're not the best at getting headers, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Although I suppose there's there's definitely an honourable me- mention there for for Fletcher. Historically, I'm going for uh, for Rita Johnson. Uh, Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> few things have have sort of lit up my heart as a Wednesday fan quite as much as him kind of just battling through a box and uh, and smashing how, a head at home. How do you find the sheer? Do you remember the sheer lankiness and strength and lankiness of Rob Jones just mullering a corner? That was quite fun. It, to be honest, Rob Jones is the first one I wrote down. Mm. Um, it was a very close run thing because they were, yeah, they were both exceptional. But I, I think Reader got more goals, which, which was the what, which was what led me to to put him in. He was the one that got included. Do you think the the appeal of looking at that for like how the joy of seeing Reader Johnson score a headed goal is just because you know he was like Bambi on ice most of the time. But it all made sense when he. Got it all there. makes sense when he just gets up in the air and just mullers a ball. Yeah, I think that. That's that, that's definitely part of the appeal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so then I've gone to arms, the, the the captaincy. So I think in the current group, the most natural leader of men, uh, although in terms of stature, probably not. But um, I, I think Bannon is the one that naturally is is talking, shouting, cajoling, and tearing people a new one when it's needed. Just seems to be a, a natural part of what he does. I assume he's probably done it from all the you know all the way up from schoolboy football <laughs> and beyond. And then I saw. Sort of struggled historically to be honest i do remember really loving and I, I know this is in your your blind spot a little bit but um graham coughlin was just an enjoyable figure to have around the, the club for the time that we that we had him i think he was 33 or 34 when he joined us mm-hmm. very much a kind of war horse but he was he was sort of the the the, the, bo- the embodiment of the manager on the pitch and and so he would win the wrestling match with a with a an opposing striker, but also win the header. And most people seem to just do the one. Uh, but it was he just had this spirit. He got the odd goal as well. He he liked to sort of get forward and uh, you know ha- have an influence in the opposition box. But two things stood out from his time that made him my uh, my pick for the for the captaincy. So the first one was I remember t- two separate occasions where. He had clearly been concussed by a clash with an, an opposition player and refusing to not be allowed to, to refusing to take his substitution and leave the pitch. He would he would have full on arguments with the with the uh, the physio and coaching staff and force his way back on and and. Uh, on one uh, yeah one occasion had to be sort of physically dragged off the pitch so that is that's a determination that not many folks have <laughs> the other thing was reading a a captain's column with him where he he talked about injuries and he said i don't really believe in injuries <laughs> Which is just unbelievable. That is the most hard man comment I've ever heard from someone. <laughs> yeah, I think he'd like, straight... like a, he like. Do you think he's almost a bit like a hard man evan- evangelical preacher in a weird way? You know, almost. I mean that that just is kind of, but less kind of rise and do this as well as just just get up and get on with it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think he'd like strained ankle ligaments or something like that. And yeah, his his captain's column was, yeah, I don't really injure. <laughs> 
amazing. So yeah, he 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 ends up with the uh, f- for me the the, the captain's the captain's armband. I've kind of lumped torso and engine together, but torso is purely there for for um for homoerotic purposes, and I think Hodge has to take it just for that that picture of him uh, during the summer. That's a mm. that's a. That's just an incredible looking dude. I, uh, yeah, he's a pretty pretty chap. Cut like a steak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, in terms of engine, so kind of, uh, yeah, ability to, to, to get around the pitch, um, I'm torn between Harris and Reach. Reach has shown a, an incredible ability to, to not just keep going within games, but also he very, very rarely misses a game. He never, he, he, he almost never seems to be injured, which is a really impressive trait. Mm. Harris so far, though, has been very impressive in terms of just how much energy he still has late on in games. He's incredible for that. Really, yeah, really incredible. Yeah. Including the last, you know, the 94th minute, he's still taking on his fullback and, and making things happen and possibly should have that should have resulted in a red card for the for the opposite opposition player historically i'd, pro- I'd probably go for liam's dad <laughs> Colin liam's dad Colin. oh yeah yeah big, th- those are my papa, sort of big papa works up <laughs> big papa works up only just now... workshops in the west midlands yes exactly <laughs> yeah there's a weird nook of workshop that just uh takes you to uh, out. takes a joint out to walsall <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah it gets around works up, doesn't it? it? Gets around, but yeah, I, that, those are my sort of nascent footballing memories. But um, for his certainly for his time, he was an incredible uh, athlete, Carlton Palmer, and played to a really good age as well. So that's always a good sign of of, of just how um, yeah how, how sort of well constructed a, 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 a footballer is. I'm then gonna I'm gonna move on to the big ones, the the right the right leg and the ref, left leg. Mm. Right leg's actually quite tricky from this current squad. <laughs> There's nobody who I sort of think has a particularly has a wand of a right foot, to be honest. It's interesting, uh, isn't it? We're, we're kind of blessed in the opposite with that, which yeah, is, kind of feels like a strength typically, since you don't typically or historically have felt with football players as more of a focus on right footed than left foot. Definitely. Do you think um, that's still the kind of case in the kind of current football climate? I wonder because I'm sure you stand out. There's a thing that like a lot almost. Uh, there's a vast majority of athletes are old for their school year. So mm. just being that bit bigger at an early age, <laughs> a lot of the sort of scouting methods across many different sports are not that sophisticated. So if you're, if you're like, you've reached your, your teenage growth spurt a bit quicker than the other people in your class, it's like, look at him, he's six foot tall, we'll have him. And I, I do wonder whether left footedness is another one of those things that kind of marks you out. So you probably get a bit more time given to you and a few more opportunities if you're left footed because it is that bit different it's but, interesting yeah, about we... sorry rich it's interesting no. about visibility because there is a thing about how um blonde players are typically scouted a lot more because they're more eye-catching because it's, it's more of a rarity to have someone who's blonde right. than it is to have someone who's a brunette technically it feels weird to call a male a brunette but um <laughs> i'm gonna get into some pretty homoerotic <laughs> tendencies oh so i can't, I can't it's wait it's gonna be some real um just just imagine me as a david Duke Covney and uh, Red Shoe Diaries on this one. <laughs> Reading some grotty <laughs> missives, walking on train tracks with my dog. So there we go. <laughs> so it's not just gentlemen that prefer blondes, it's also football scouts. That's interesting. Indeed, yeah. Football <laughs> scouts prefer blondes, yes. The long forgotten um, Marilyn Monroe film. <laughs> Oh dear! Given the uh, given the nick of most scouts, that that would be a pretty unfortunate. I do um, want to see Marilyn Monroe second. with a flat cap, uh, like an old <laughs> shot reserve game. Just you know, with some but, chewing tobacco. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, given given the task of trying to pick out a a, a standout right footer, I saw, you know Hodge has 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 a a pretty peachy pass in his locker. We see those cross those raking crossfield balls from time to time. So I think he's the he takes the honour, although it, it isn't a particularly prestigious <laughs> award award amongst the current crowd. So, but then historically, it's uh, it's got to go to to one David Hurst for me. Good stuff. Still, still holds a record for fastest shot ever recorded. I believe that you know, in, when it's quiet, 
you can still hear the 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 bar rattling from that particular shot. Uh, so yeah, so D- David Hurst with a piston of a right foot it's, take, takes the takes the prize there. Left leg in the current group. This is so as we touched on. This is a bit more. There's a bit more competition here. But I, I'm going to give it to Reach. We've we've just enjoyed so many uh, tremendous efforts from his uh, his left foot. And I think Bannon's maybe got a bit more finesse. Mm. But he just doesn't have uh, this too big of a gap between his uh, his goal scoring escapades. So it, it definitely goes to to Adam Reach for me. Mm. Historically, honourable mention to Chris Brunt because again, in 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 some dark periods for the club, he certainly won games for us single handedly and has gone on to have a really good career. There are not many in the last sort of fifteen years. I don't think there's many Sheffield Wednesday players who have left Sheffield Wednesday and played at a higher level. And not only that, kind of excelled at that higher level because he became captain at the club. He's also been captain for his country. So he and and scored some of the best goals I've ever seen uh, live. But my best, my favourite player ever is Chris Waddle, and he has to t- he has to take that prize. My own footballing escapades, which are few and far between, <laughs> and certainly not noteworthy in any way but he is the player that I want to look like when I play football sort of walking players into falling over with just skill and a drop of the shoulder yeah just an absolute joy to to have watched him in a Sheffield Wednesday shirt Mm -hmm. Um, I I still I have a signed shirt of Chris Waddle that um, one of these days I'm going to get get framed and 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 display somewhere but um at the moment it's just one of my precious items scurried away in a in a in a corner somewhere <laughs> but um yeah he he was the best so that's my Munkenstein's monster brought to life through light through a lightning bolt and 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 here to um roam around S6 with all of his skill and heart and brilliance at headers so what, what direction have you gone in Luke so mine is a little bit kind of here there and everywhere and it's an interesting perspective and it's probably from limited perspective of what I've seen of Wednesday disclaimer 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 yeah yeah so I'm gonna kind of go from the top to the bottom let's just well it feels like maybe to finish with the feet but I'm I'm enjoying some of the later stuff so let's uh let's start the feet right foot and left foot I've gone for Waddle and and for for Bannon, for the right foot with Waddle and the left foot with Bannon. Okay. Nice. Imagine the magic conjured by two impeccable feet like ones of Chrissy Waddle and Barry, Barry Bannon. The best of both worlds, but not like Jay Z and R. Kelly's album. <laughs> Excellent. And then we're moving up. The legs have got a kind of a little bit um, kind of separated here. So I've gone for the shins and knees of Darren Purse. So the culture back passing uses the, sh- the shins and knees of Darren oh, Purse yeah. is something very useful. Um, imagine some easy and gentle prods back to the goalkeeper whilst winding up opposing fans should this largely attack minded monster find himself covering in centre back. Kind of a reverse war horse, if you will. Super. Um, for the calves, I've gone for the power of Jermaine Johnson. The jet fueled leg components of everyone's favourite Powerade swilling mouse in the bucket Jamaican would make this monster lightning quick. <laughs> oh, I love the throwback to the mouse in the bucket. I think of him off. It's always good. And then moving and on Johnson as well. Johnson was a, was a joy. He was a delight to watch. I love how he got the, the 23 number, you know, much like uh, much like David Beckham. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the fact they wore the same number is where the comparisons end. <laughs> they both played football. They did both play football and they similar positions on the pitch. Mm. <laughs> They're both human beings. See? The comparisons start and never end. Unlike this monster of mine, which uh, I'm, I'm going to say is human, so they can get registered uh, legally with the FA. But uh, between me and you, it's uh, no, it's a fucking monster. <laughs> Uh, for the quads, I've gone for someone similar to yourself. I've gone with Rita Johnson. So the big old meaty thighs of the Benin beauty, Rita Johnson. Uh, the closest you can get to the muscles of a horse in man form. <laughs> Excellent choice. Ah, oh, superb. <laughs> um, so I, I realized when I'm looking over my list, one thing I was thinking about was who am I going to pick for? I could pick a lot of muscles, effectively. The only thing I think I've kind of relied away from was hips, which I don't think I'm very good judge of because I have very poor hip muscles. So okay. whoever has a strong... I'm going to do a series of tests on um, a series of hips from from uh, promising players to see who still has them. But Okay. Probably not Kieran Lee. Probably not anyone with recurring groin issues. Uh, there's a few things I'm not going to look at to uh, to slop those parts onto this monster. 
<laughs> uh, moving on to the torso. So I've gone for the, um, let me just check my notes here. Uh, the torso is made up of the back and puffed up chest of Cogba. Again, another point of defense and attack, holding off players to buy precious time in the corner. Chris O'Grady's ripped back torso and big bird chest acting as a broad shield. I've forgotten all about Cogba. Oh, See, because, and then what if you would get really, really like minute with this, which I haven't beyond this level. But if you would want to... The thing I loved about Chris O'Grady was that little touch he used to do. So he'd hold people off and he'd like he'd kind of like drag the ball out with like the instep of one of his feet. Yes. And it was so uniquely Chris O'Grady. And it just it looked really good, you know? It looked impeccable. It looked amazing. It, it, it felt a bit like one of the things I think I'm okay at doing at five aside is if the ball gets, you know, hoofed up in the air. I can kind of bring it down and kind of cushion a pass to the side. And it doesn't take a great deal of skill, but it looks good. I'll tell you that for sure. I can only imagine. That sounds sounds a delight. It is a delight. It is a delight. <laughs> so if I ever get to the fitness of Luke's Wenger <laughs> monster, then uh, maybe I could film it and then show it to you, Rich, at some point. Oh, going back, going back. I've missed oh. out something very, very important from the middle of the, uh, the monster. And that's the arse of Gary Hooper. Oh, Beautiful, yes. Imagine the powerful arse cheeks knocking and brushing aside defenders with a plum and ease. Never has an attacking grinding against a defender been so classy, and now the arse of Gary Hooper is alive once again to put it about in an elegant fashion. <laughs> Impossible to get around Hooper when he got that when he got those those meaty cheeks in his, in in between you and the ball. That was that was game over. And I'm disappointed. My nickname of Gary Dumper never took took <laughs> took off and um, <laughs> caught around the terraces. <laughs> But hopefully I can kind of uh, put it in the ears of uh, the Besiktas fans in Turkey and then maybe that could take off. Who knows? Yeah, well, I'm I'm now wanting to find out what Turkish for dumper is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You'll be thinking of some uh, Chronicles of Narnia when he puts his Turkish delight into some uh, <laughs> into some Galatasaray defenders. <laughs> Damperilli Camion. <laughs> Gary, Gary Damperilli Camion. Gary it's got Damperilli a beautiful Camion. ring to it. It does. It does indeed. <laughs> so moving on to the arms, I went in a slightly different direction. I, I really liked your idea and concept of captaincy. Um, mm. I would have stolen that myself, but I've stolen Gary Medine's arms from a monster. Oh, okay. And um, it certainly isn't a non-contact sport when the opposite player and allegedly general public bothering Geordie Guns of Big Gaz decides a defense is <laughs> having a bit of that with a hearty shove. <laughs> Probably with a celebratory bosh as well. Is that what the name is for the thing with the thumb and the finger over the nose? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I I never went on Geordie Shaw Wikipedia or whatever it is to find out about it. (laughs) But I did enjoy that. So anyway, I think he would definitely give a bit of a nightmare to some defenders in that regard. Moving on. So I've got the mug of Federico Venancio because he's he's a good looking chap. Yes. Very handsome gentleman. Um, with a slightly more kind of, this is maybe getting to more qualities, but the grin and enthusiasm of Julian Berner. Imagine those cheeky, gnashing grin, giving the celebration of the finer and smaller parts of the game. Excellent. And moving on to the hairdo, I've got the coiffure of Sam Hutchinson. Oh, yeah. Um, and this would also lose some of his cultured Chelsea upbringing into the fore and some of his just general lovable charm to the proceedings. Super duper. What a what a chap he is. I, 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 was, enjoy, I was enjoying you sort of regaling us about his uh, commentary, but having watched the uh, the extended highlights, also got a good a good chunk of Sam, uh, including him correcting the, com- the co-commentator when he, he hadn't noticed that a player had already been taken off. That's Sam Hutchinson. But he didn't do it, in a, you know, he wasn't showing off. Did it nicely. He's, he's yeah. a classic dude. He is indeed. And he'll finally... He'll bite but he'll say sorry. <laughs> and I'm finally going to take some more kind of individual qualities of some players here. So the aerial ability of Dion Burton, the yes. radar of prime Kieran Lee, the finishing oh. of David Hurst, the clapping skills of James O'Connor, and finally the heart and determination of Jose Semedo. This is my Wednesday monster. That's a great monster. I, f- I feel like yours has put mine to shame. You've really, you've really thought about this deeply. I've taken some liberal uh, decisions in my unethical building of this monster. Well, it's the, it's the. I think you're at the cutting edge of work with with those strands of DNA, aren't you? That's how you've managed to, you know, you manipulate at a at a much more granular level. Uh, whereas I very much see the human body as hunks of meat and I've just tied <laughs> great <laughs> rotting hunks uh, to each other and, and hope for the best. 
lumping a whole brain in a different head. Well, that's, well, that's uh, what we do. I mean, both our monsters are great on paper, but who knows how they would perform on the pitch, right? Yeah. There should be a... Uh, you could probably build them somehow in, uh, in, in something like Football Manager, couldn't you? Like, all those traits... My guy would definitely be like six foot seven or so, or six foot four, maybe. But once you're adding all those parts together, or you're just deciding on like some extra I'm kind just of deciding. That's them. my kind of ideal. I'd, I'd, I'd lob in some extra ribs or whatever's needed. I just think that's the, the that's the right height. <laughs> I'd, I'd like it if we were just chatting about this and you were saying, oh, yeah, I got, I got a good deal on some uh, leftover parts of Nikola Zigic. <laughs> so I'm just going to chuck those in just for a bit of, uh, bit of a few inches, you know. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zigit. Yeah, just a hunk of spinal column from somebody to uh, stretch the whole thing. Out. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I've often, I, I've often thought that that's what we should have done. You know, instead of spending money on on extra players, once we got Bannon in the door, I think the project should have been genetic mutations on on his form, so that we could have like a a six foot five Bannon, uh, maybe a, st- a sort of more st- even more stocky Bannon. Uh, just keep playing with it to find like what's the perfect arrangement of Bannon. Because mm. one of the, the things that does hold him back is that he's a he's a little he's a little guy. He's a real little guy. I would like to yeah I'd like to play with the form and see what we could do. See if we could make make something unbeatable. So that those are our Munkenstein's monsters. If people would, yeah, as I say, if people would like to submit their own, feel free to either go down Luke's route or mine or or a, a hodgepodge of both. You could create your own, you know, monstrous mutation of of both types of uh, of monst- of Munkenstein's monster. But yeah, it's like a, it's like a pizza that you can make um, somehow all the toppings work together, or a visit to a Las Vegas buffet where technically all the food oh, yeah. you could actually somehow make it all digestible. And not want to throw up after. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A smorgasbord. Mm. So um, yeah, well, that's that's uh, that's us for to, for today. I think, as we said, the, the plan was just to to do something a little bit different to to the to the the usual weekly episodes in this international break. So we've sort of stretched our legs a little. And but, um, uh, and why not in the international break prior to Halloween create a uh, create a monstrosity that we have? It's almost like we planned it. I mean, oh. you would certainly. Um, I think if this monster came to your door for trick or treating, you would certainly hand over the keys to your hand house in fear well you'd have to with yours otherwise gary medine's arms would smack you around the head <laughs> that would happen yes <laughs> he'd go gbh all over yo ass <laughs> <laughs> i think you don't even need to say allegedly because he was found guilty i guess so uh, i'm just trying to uh, <laughs> i'm just trying to make sure that it's uh, as problematic free before i start saying problematic things yeah yeah but I think, yeah, once once proven by a jury of your peers, then uh, that's pretty much it, isn't it? We can throw you under the bus. It's fine. <laughs> I, I I have to say, with Gary Medin, I really very much enjoyed most of Gary Medin's time with Sheffield Wednesday. And it's a real shame how things ended, because I think... I genuinely think he could have been a, a pretty special player if he chose different <laughs> paths in life. Mm. Uh, yeah, th- there was a, just a point where almost everything he tried worked, including a pretty tame effort from about 30 yards out against Chesterfield (laughs) that I just think through sheer confidence managed to become a goal because it was not a good enough shot to really be uh, be allowed in by the goalkeeper so that yeah there was definitely a time where I think he could have gone on to be a a multi-million pound striker um legitimately rather than weirdly as as happened later on in his career but uh but there we go this these things happen so we're ending on a weird bum note but that's fine (laughs) <laughs> Anything else Ooh, today, Luke? No, it's different no, gravy. It. Just, um, it's Rich and Luke uh, and the talking Wednesday. It's where it won't take us Star long, but as we love the hours, we may yeah. start rambling on and on and on. Have a nice week, folks, and uh, look after yourselves. And we'll see you post Cardiff. I'll see you then, guys. Cheerio, Luke. See you. Bye bye.